Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right, I want everybody, inshallah, back here. It's not time for dinner yet. I want you to stay focused with me here. We're not done yet. Brothers and... Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الحمد لله كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيك ما يحب ربنا ويرضى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. So we've been uh, talking about the objectives of the Sharia and this is the third majlis as part of the winter break conference for 2018. Uh, this masjid, this masjid al mubarak, masjid dar al Quran. In Chicago um, and so inshallah this will be the last majlis for tonight uh, and we we'll continue our discussion of the objectives of the Sharia ah. and uh, the maqasid of the Sharia ah. we talked about the last thing we talked about before Isha is we talked about some of the conditions of the objectives of the Sharia. Ah. So we did talk about purification of the heart and attaching them, yani the hearts, attaching the hearts to Allah Azza wa Jal, to their Creator, and purifying them to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. We did talk about also correcting the understanding, our views, the views that we hold toward this life, to view it for what it is. To view the money for what it is. To view the different matters. A lot of understandings are incorrect in this life. A lot of people look at different things and they have misunderstanding or they see them not as Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to see them. Right? We give the example of the money. That's one of the common mistakes or one of the common matters that people defer in how they view money and wealth in general. And we did talk about how we're supposed to see that. And actually for the money to actually to view it as a means for us, that it works for us, not we working for the money. Right? Right. Continuing that, the third condition of the objectives of the Sharia ah is to observe the Sharia ah in all aspects of our life. For this Sharia ah is a complete Sharia, ah, is a perfect Sharia. Ah. It did not miss anything. It did not forget anything, right? There is nothing that we cannot find that is addressed in the Sharia. Ah. So it addresses all the aspects of our life, and Allah Azza wa Jal revealed to us that which will be sufficient for us, and it is a complete, perfect Sharia. Ah. Like I said, did not leave anything of the actions of the servants. Uh, but there is a ruling for it, uh, there is a hukum for it. Allah Azza wa Jal says, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ Did you think that we have created you in play without any purpose, pointlessly? Uh, and that you would not be brought back to us? So there is a, a ruling for every matter, for every deed. Uh, and Allah Azza wa Jal says, ونز... و... said, وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ تِبِيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمًا وَبُشْرًا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ And we have sent down to you the book, which is this Qur'an, as an exposition of everything. It clarifies everything. It uh, guides us to everything. It gives us everything that we need, right? تِبِيَانًا to bayin. It clarifies everything for us. وَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدِ And this is the great bounty of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And this is why we should abide by the Sharia ah in all the aspects of our life. And Allah Azza wa Jal says in the ayah of Surah Al-An'am, قُلْ الْأَنْعَامِ نَعَمْ قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say, يعني, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, verily my salah, my prayer, my sacrifice, my living and my dying are for Allah, the Lord of both worlds. 
And if they belong to Allah Azza wa Jal, if my prayer belongs to Allah Azza wa Jal, if my sacrifice belongs to Allah Azza wa Jal, and if my life and my death belong to Allah Azza wa Jal, this necessitates, the necessity of that is that I should actually do them according to what Allah Azza wa Jal wants from me. If they belong, if I pray, if my salah is for Allah, so I pray the way He wants from me, right? If the sacrifice that I give is for Allah, then I do it the way Allah Azza wa Jal wants from me. Life, if it, life belongs to Allah Azza wa Jal, then I conduct my life according to what Allah Azza wa Jal wants from me. And this is what he revealed to us in the, in the text, in the book, and in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we, we repeat and we mentioned this before, whoever abides by this, whoever understands this, and abides by what we just described, then you will see that their life and their benefits will be achieved and their life will be stable and will be tranquil and will be safe and secure and they will have the satisfaction in their life and everything will be guaranteed to them from the necessities, from the five necessities that the Sharia came to preserve to the rest of the aspects of this life, right? Your intellect is preserved in the Sharia. Your honor is, in, is preserved in the Sharia. Your religion is, in, is preserved in the Sharia. Your wealth and money is preserved in the Sharia. And your offsprings are, and the soul and the life, one's life is preserved in the Sharia. So you see that the Sharia came to preserve your benefits. Masalih al ibad. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, addressing the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have sent you, O Muhammad, not but as a mercy to both worlds, al-jinn and al-ins. Which means that is a rahma, meaning that this is a sharia, we have sent you with a sharia that achieves the benefits of people. Rahma lil alameen, yani it is some, it is a sharia that achieves the benefits, the masalih. Of people. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa radiitu lakum al-Islam adina. And this day I have perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you, and I have chosen for you Islam as your religion. So we see that this Sharia is a complete, perfect, everything that we need, everything that brings us benefit is there for sure. It did not omit anything, it did not overlook anything, it did not forget anything. Everything that we need, that we have benefit, that we have maslaha in, that we have benefit in, in this world, and like I said, more importantly, the hereafter, remember the, one of the uh, broad perspectives of the Sharia is that it, brings out, it, br it makes us look forward toward the hereafter. And this dunya comes as part of it. So everything is in, in this Sharia. Type. And you see that when we say that when you look for the hereafter and the Sharia, when you actually abide by it, it brings you the benefits of this world, right? Here's what Allah Azza wa Jal has to say about that. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says in the ayat of Surah Al Talaq, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ and whoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him. How do you fear Allah and how do you keep duties to him? By abiding with the Sharia, by abiding to the Sharia. Well, what is the outcome of that? What happens if you do that? Allah Azza wa Jal is promising. He will make a way for him to get out of every difficulty. This is maslaha in this dunya. This is a benefit in this dunya. So you see, when you actually look forward to the hereafter, Allah will make your benefit from in this dunya will give you your benefit. He will make a way out of you, out for you. And he will provide him from sources he never could imagine. And whoever puts his trust in Allah, then he will suffice him. Hasbunallah wa na'mal wakil. He is sufficient for us. In another ayah, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ yusra." Surah Al-Talaq as well. And whoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him, again, by abiding to his sharia, he will make his matter easy for him. Allahumma lak alhamd. He will make his matter easy for him. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'min falanuhyiyannahu hayatan tayyibah. 
And whoever works righteousness, whether male or female, everybody, while he or she is a true believer, to him we will give him a good life. Most people who, who deviate from the Sharia, ah, one of their reasons is what? I want this life. I want to be happy. I want your benefit in this dunya. Well, you're not going to miss it. One of the objectives of the Sharia, ah, objective of the Sharia, ah, is that it guarantees you your benefit in this world. If you abide by it. And Allah Azza wa is, you want a happy life? Who doesn't? Who doesn't, brothers and sisters? Who doesn't? We all want, right? That's a legitimate uh, goal. To be, I want to be happy. Well, Allah Azza wa Jal is directing you to that He will get you happy life. If you believe and you do righteousness, we will give a good to Him, we will give a good life. And we shall pay them certainly a reward in proportion to the best of what they used to do. And for the believers, it was incumbent upon us to help them. Allahu Akbar. And for the believers, it was incumbent upon us to help them. Meaning in this dunya as well. In another ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّا لَنَنْصُرُ رُسُولَنَا وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْأَشْهَادِ Verily, we will indeed make victorious our messengers and those who believe. If Allah Azza wa Jal stopped at the messengers, you would say, well, these are the messengers. Where am I in the equation? Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّ لَنَنْصُرُ رُسُولَنَا وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And the believers as well, with the messengers and the prophets. We will indeed make victorious our messengers and those who believe in this world and in the hereafter. Or when the witnesses they stand, will take stand. Where is that? On the day of resurrection, in the hereafter. So Allah Azza wa Jal will make us victorious, will give you your benefits, will help you out and take care of you in this world and in the hereafter. Alhamdulillah. The last part of our majalis sessions on the objectives of the Sharia. Ah. Now, after all of these principles, we set the principles, we set the usul of how we should understand the objectives of the Sharia. Ah. Let's actually take a look at a couple examples, actual objectives of the Sharia. Ah. We start with one that we already a little bit hinted at, which is maqsad iqamat al lillah. Establishing servitude to Allah Azza wa That is the single greatest objective of the Sharia ah, for the servant to establish al to his or her Lord. And this is actually the object and the, the, the reason and the purpose from the creation altogether. Allah Azza wa created us for that objective. Like Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I created not the jinn and humans except that they worship me. That tells us what? That إِقَامَةِ الْعُبُودِيَةِ Establishing servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal is an objective of the Sharia. Ah. Allah Azza wa Jal says, I sent down books and I sent messengers for that purpose. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ Remember, commands in the, in the text indicate what? Objectives. Right? Remember that? Or were we asleep? Brothers, don't, don't start thinking of the dinner yet. Um, I mean, it's not going to go away. Believe me, I'm not going to be able to eat it all together. So it's, you're guaranteed dinner. Everybody's guaranteed dinner. Stay with me, please. Barakallah fikum. <laughs> Coffee? Anybody? Type. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُودِ And verily we have sent among every ummah, every ummah, a messenger proclaiming to them, worship Allah. That makes it what? An objective. And avoid taghut. Anybody or anything that crosses the mark, goes beyond the mark that Allah Azza wa Jal made it. And that is why the saying of every single prophet and messenger to his people was, أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ Every one of them, the messengers and the prophets, alayhim wasalam, they would come to their people and they say, Allah, and this gets repeated in multiple ayat. Allah ta'budu illa Allah. Do not worship except Allah alone. Worship Allah alone. That's the objective. That's the greatest objective and the purpose of life. 
And if you look at it in the Sharia al Islam, which is based on Shahadatain, Shahada to Allah ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. The first half to affirm the Shahada that there's no true deity except Allah, it actually includes and comprises of al Ubudiyya lillah tabaraka wa ta'ala. That there is no true deity worthy of worship to be served except Allah Azza wa Jal. That includes servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal and nobody else. And we do all that we do. We pray, we give zakah, we fast. All of this is to establish this Ubudiyya, this objective that we were created for to establish the Ubudiyya to Allah Azza wa Jal. We pray. Because we step by praying, we establish the ubudiyah to Allah. We fast because we by that we establish the ubudiyah to Allah Azza wa Jal. We give the zakah, etc., etc., because by doing that we establish the ubudiyah to Allah Azza wa Jal. Not only that, Ya Ibad Allah, this Sharia is so great, and we should appreciate that that this ubudiyah that we're talking about, we can achieve it literally in everything we do in this life. It's obvious to a lot of people among us, literally to every Muslim, that when you pray, you are establishing servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal. But what may, they may not understand is that by intending Allah Azza wa Jal and intending Dar al Akhirah and intending Ridwan, the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, all of a sudden you can actually transform all your life into a ibadah and ubudiyah lillah tabaraka wa ta'ala. You're eating. You're sleeping. You could be sleeping during the night and you could be snoring. And the malaika are writing hasanat for you. Allahu Akbar. Snoring, brothers and sisters. And you're writing hasanat if you sleep with the intention that you are taking care of this body that Allah Azza wa Jal entrusted you with. And you are refreshing your, this body that needs, right? It gets tired to wake up and get up the next morning or whatever that you will establish the ubudiyya to Allah Azza wa Jal to be able to keep going without sleeping, you could not. These are traditions, adat. This is something that we're used to. A lot of people are heedless about why they're sleeping. If you do it correctly, then you are earning hasanat as you are snoring. Eating. You're eating so that you take care of this body to give it the food of this body so that you can establish Taqawi, to strengthen this body, to do the ubudiyya, to establish the ubudiyya, which is the perspective of, uh, the objective of the sharia, etc., etc. Allah Azza wa Jal says, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس ومن يفعل ذلك بتغاء مرضات الله فسوف نأتيه أجرا عظيما There is no good in most of their secret talks save in him who orders sadaqah or ma'roof anything good or conciliation between mankind and he who does this here's the point and he who does this seeking the good pleasure of Allah يعني with intention not just something customary that he keeps doing right we all go to sleep at night we all eat, we all drink, we all satisfy our pleasures in a legal way. But if you do that, seeking the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, approaching your wife, you are actually just pleasing yourself. Can you get a reward for it? Yes. If you do it to preserve yourself, to protect yourself and protect your wife, and maybe with an intention to get good offsprings that worship Allah Azza wa Jal, all of these are from the good intention, righteous intentions. SubhanAllah, you satisfy in a good way and you earn reward for Allah Azza wa Jal. Establishing al ubudiyya lillah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And whoever and he who does this seeking the good pleasure of Allah, we shall give him, give, give him a great reward. Even putting the food in the mouth of your, of your wife. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this hadith in, in Sahih al-Bukhari, he said, إِنَّكَ لَن تُنْفِقَ نَفَقَةً تَبْتَغِي بِهَا وَجْهَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا أُجِرْتَ عَلَيْهَا حَتَّى مَا تَجْعَلْ فِي فَمِ مْرَأَتِكَ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, you will be rewarded for whatever you spend for Allah's cause or sake, even if it were a morsel of food which you put in your wife's mouth. Now obviously if you do it with a good intention. This is what he ordered you to do. And al-ihsan on the wife, to do good to the wife. And this is what Allah Azza wa Jalla. If you do that, remembering that, 
for that sake, pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal, then you get rewarded for the morsel of food that you put in your wife's mouth. Allahu Akbar. Likewise for your kids and whatever, etc. Al Muhtajin, the, the Masakeen, the um, the needy one and the poor, etc. etc. Allahu Akbar. So it is not the ubudiyah, this objective is not restricted to the ibadat that we all know. Your life, entire life, can be in an implementation of this objective that you were created for. Everything that you do in life could be part of the, the income that you do, the job that you do. You could say, I want to make money to be able to spend on those who need, to give out zakah, to give sadaqah. So you can transform your whole entire life into an implementation of this great objective of an ubudiya lillah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Look how the perspective of the sharia changes when you have a good understanding of the objectives of the sharia. The second half of shahada, shahada to anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, that also comprises that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is a servant of Allah azza wa jal that he bestowed upon him the greatest favor and chose him as the last messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and revealed to him this great sharia and he is the last one of the messengers and his sharia is staying until the hour whoever sticks to it will be happy in this life and in the hereafter and whoever deviates from it will be a an evil person and will pay the price he has rights upon us this Prophet, this great Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, has a right upon us and this is the necessity of this shahada that we love him, a great love. We hold a great love to him alayhi salatu wasalam, greater love than lo the, our love for ourselves and our families and our kids and everything in this life. And from his uh, right upon us is that we o obey his orders and stay away from his prohibitions. And whoever the messengers and whatsoever the messengers gives you, take it and whatsoever he forbids you, abstain. And from his rights upon us is to believe him in everything that he told us and to follow and stick to his guidance. قال رب العزة والجلال لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر. Indeed, in the messengers of Allah, you have a good example to follow for him who hopes in the meeting with Allah in the last day. وقال تعالى قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم. Say يعني يا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم to mankind if you really love Allah then follow me. Allah will loves you. Or will love you and will forgive all of your sins. This is from his rights upon us, alayhi salatu wasalam. From his rights as well is to know and recognize and appreciate his great favor upon us. For he was sent with this sharia, ah, which is the greatest favor upon us. He was the one who brought it to us. He was the one who was the, re the recipient of this revelation and of the sharia, ah, and he conveyed it to us. So we should un appreciate the greatest favor upon us, which is Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal says, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَأُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ Verily that has come to you, unto you a messenger, صلى الله عليه وسلم, from amongst yourself. It grieves him that you should receive any injury or difficulty. Any injury, any hardship that we go through, it, uh, it, 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 it grieves him. He is anxious over you for the believers full of pity, kind, and merciful. SubhanAllah. And from his rights, alayhi salatu wasalam, that we do not worship Allah Azza wa Jal except based on his way. Tariqatihi alayhi salatu wasalam and his sunnah alayhi salatu wasalam. And like I said, this is from the necessity of the shahada anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah yaqulu rabbul izzati wal jalal am lahum shuraka'u shara'u lahum min ad-deen ma lam ya'zan bihi Allah or have they partners with Allah who have instituted for them a religion which Allah has not allowed. So the way to earn the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal is the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he Alayhi Salatu Wasallam says in the great hadith which is related by Imam Muslim, Man amila amala laysa alayhi amruna fahuwa rad. He who does an act which we have not commended will have it rejected, meaning by Allah Azza wa Jal. 
So from every, for all this discussion of al ubudiyya lillah and the necessity of the both shahadatain, the both testimonies, we understand that we should not build any rules and ahkam except on the evidence from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which they have revealed to us everything that we need so that we worship Allah Azza wa Jal based on clarity and based on knowledge. طيب. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, اتبعوا ما أنزل إليكم من ربكم ولا تتبعوا من دونه أولياء قليلا ما تذكرون Say, O Muhammad, follow what has been sent down unto you from your Lord and follow not any awliya, protectors and helpers beside him, beside Allah Azza wa Jal, little do you remember. And, in the, and for the sake of uh, brevity and, and conciseness, um, one of the ways that you can earn this consciousness of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and following is to actually contemplate and ponder and keep thinking and keep looking into the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa because guidance is in it. Allah Azza says, Kitab Anzalnahu Ilayka Mubarakun Liyadabaru Ayatihi Waliyatakara Ulul Albab. This is a book which we have sent down to you full of full of bless, blessings that they may ponder ponder over its verses and that man of understanding may remember. Allah Azza wa Jal says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ أَلَا قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not then think deeply into the Quran, ponder, reflect? Or are their hearts locked up? which means that we should ponder upon the Qur'an. It is a guidance. This book is a guidance and there is no uh, doubt about it. Yet Allah Azza wa Jal says that it is a Qur'an that was revealed in the Arabic language. Verily we have sent it down as an Arabic Qur'an in order that you may understand. Which is something that I wanted to quickly uh, touch upon, which is, Ya Ibad Allah, this is, guides us to the need to study the Arabic language. Because you're not going to be able to ponder upon the Quran and reflect upon it fully. Nor will you be able to be guided fully by it unless you know the language that it was revealed in. And the translators of the Quran no matter how good they are, no matter how eloquent and skilled in the language that they translate the Qur'an to, they're not going to be able to do justice to the Qur'an. Al-Qur'an is kalamullah. And the translation is the work of the translator. And we should remember this difference. No matter how good, and don't get me wrong, they, some of them are really good. But no matter how good, they're going to miss some of the meanings and some of the guidance that is in the original text, which is the speech of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So no matter how good they are, they're not going to be able to capture all the guidance and all the eloquency of the Qur'an, which is the speech of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. I'll give you a quick example. One of the adjectives of Allah Azza wa Jal, one of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal that is mentioned so much in the Qur'an or so often, is in Allah Sami'un Basir. Indeed, Allah is all hearing, all seeing. That's what typically they translate it to. Sami' is the all hearing. Which means, if you ask any translator or any non Arabic speaker, what is Sami' all hearing? Means that he hears everything. And this is one of the meanings. This is one of the meanings. Another meaning is that. Allah Azza wa Jal answers the dua. Sami' means that he answers the dua. Qala Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, inna rabbi la sami'u dua Ibrahim. Verily, my Lord is indeed the all-hearer of invocations, meaning that he answers it. That's another meaning. A third meaning of a sami' Allahu Akbar, there's a third meaning? Yes, there is a third meaning. The third meaning, it means that he protects his awliya. His allies and believers. قَالَ رَبُّ الْعِزَّةِ وَالْجَلَالِ إِنَّنِي مَعَكُمَا أَسْمَعُ وَأَرَى Verily, my Lord, in, uh, I'm sorry, I, may, I am with you both. يعني موسى and Harun. He said, go to Fir'aun. Talk to him, preach to him. And don't worry, I am with you. 
I he hearing and seeing, meaning that I will protect you and I will take care of you. So whoever translates as Samia, all hearing, he captured one meaning, he missed two, two others. There are three meanings. Only one is captured in the translation. Two are missed in the, trans in the process of translation. So you want to ponder upon the Quran fully and completely and perfectly? You have to consider studying the Arabic language. A lot of things are missed and I'm not saying on purpose, it's the process, it's the way it is. A lot of things will be missed on the way on the process of translation. No matter how good they are. طيب. Another from the objectives of the Sharia ah is that we establish this ubudiyah to Allah Azza wa Jal based on love, mahabba lillah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So there's the objective of al ubudiyah. Also from the objectives is that this ubudiyah be established based on love, based on fear, based on hope, and based on sincerity to Allah Azza wa Jal and glorification and humbleness to Allah Azza wa Jal and the sense of that Allah Azza wa Jal is watching over us. يَقُولُ رَبُّ الْعِزَّةِ وَالْجَلَالِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ But those who believe love Allah more, so we love Allah Azza wa Jal in our servitude to Him. وَقَالَ رَبُّ الْعِزَّةِ وَالْجَلَالِ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَهُ and Allah will bring people from whom He loves and they love Him. So love to Allah. Mahabba lillah. So we na'budullah based on love to Allah Azza wa Jal. But as well based on fear. Wa farhabun. And fear none but me. Fala takhafuhum wa khafun in kuntum mu'mineen. So fear them not but fear me if you are true believers. Also out of hope to Allah Azza wa Jal. وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا And they used to call on us. These are the messengers and the prophets alayhim salatu wassalam. Allah is describing them in Surah Al-Anbiya. And they used to call upon us. Remember those who were awake. <laughs> Remember when we talked about Surah Al-Anbiya and we said one of its maqasid is to show that Allah Azza wa Jal hears the invocation and answers them. Remember that? طيب. Look at this ayah. He, Allah Azza wa Jal is describing all the messengers and all the prophets that they used to call on us with hope and fear. This is one of its maqasid of the surah. And it is also from the maqasid of the sharia to call upon Allah Azza wa Jal and that he hears us and answer us. And they used to call on us with hope and fear and they used to humble themselves before us. Hence, servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal based on fear and based on, law, uh, based on hope of Allah Azza wa Jal and humbleness to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, raghab, raghaban, yani hope to Allah Azza wa Jal. Wa rahaba, out of fear to Allah Azza wa Jal. <coughs> Another maqsad of the sharia. Ah. This is a great one. I love this maqsad because it is so much misunderstood. And those who do not understand the maqasad of the sharia, ah, they have the wrong perspective of the sharia. Ah. Maqsad al-tayseer wa takhfif The maqsad of ease and lightening the burden upon the servants. That's not what a lot of people see it. A lot of people see the sharia ah as limitation and restrictions and putting a burden upon the servants. Why, does Allah Azza wa Jalla, why did Allah Azza wa Jalla legislate this? Why did Allah Azza wa Jalla legislate that? They, we see, they, oh, I'm sorry, they see they see the Sharia ah as a set of rules to put a burden upon us. On the very contrary. One of the objectives of Allah Azza wa Jal in this Sharia ah is to e make it easy on us and to, in to lighten the burden. How is that? If you look at all the rules of the Sharia, ah, you will see that the ease of the Ahkam and the lightening of the burden is across the Sharia. Ah. There is the ease, which is the very principle of the Sharia, and you see this across all the all the ahkam of the Sharia. Our Rabbul Azzati wal Jalal yaqul ma jaala alaykum fi dini min haraj, and has not laid upon you in religion any hardship across all the Sharia. This is the ease, which is in principle, lastly, all of the ahkam of the Sharia are easy, and they lighten the burden. Rabbul Azzati wal Jalal says. يريد الله بكم اليسرة ولا يريد بكم العسرة ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم الله intends it is an objective 
This is what he wanted from the ahkam of the sharia. Ah. He wanted to make it easy upon you. So this is an objective. Allah intends for you ease. And he does not want to make things difficult for you. But you must complete the same number of days from the fasting. This is the ayah of the fasting in Surah Al-Baqarah. If you missed, you're traveling due to sickness, then you must complete those days that you missed and that you must magnify Allah for having guided you. Rasulullah Sallallahu says in the hadith, بُعِثْتُ بِالْحَنِيفِيَّةِ samha. I was sent with the Hanifiyyah, which is the deen of Ibrahim, which is a Tawheed. And then he described by Samha. This deen is Samh, meaning that it is easy and it lightens the burden. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ And we have intended, we have indeed made the Qur'an easy to remember and to understand. Then is there anyone who will remember? And the scholars have said, if when, uh, since Allah Azza wa Jal made this Qur'an easy to remember and memorize and to recite, likewise He made it easy to practice and implement. So all the ahkam in the Qur'an, like the verses were made easy to recite and memorize. There are so many hafaz. There is no other book people can, can remember by heart. Nobody, remem nobody memorized another book other than the Qur'an. Why? Because it was made easy to remember and memorize. Likewise, Allah Azza wa Jal, like He made it easy to recite and remember, He made it easy to practice and implement. Alhamdulillah. This is what you see across all the Sharia. Ah. Then on top of that, doesn't, it's not at the end of the story. That's not the end of the story. On top of that, then there are in certain cases, there is an extra ease beyond the ease that is across all the Sharia. Ah, which is necessitated by certain scenarios and cases. For example, from what the Aqdar of Allah Azza wa Jal befalls the person, sickness, illness, Traveling, etc., etc., forgetfulness, right? Not being able to perform certain actions, then there is an extra ease that comes with these conditions. On top of that, uh, ease that is in principle. So, what is mandatory upon a person may not be mandatory upon another. Rasulullah says in the hadith which is in Sahih al Bukhari, he said, Salli qa'iman, pray standing up. فَإِن لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ فَجَالِسًا أَوْ فَقَاعِدًا so, But if you cannot, then pray while sitting if you cannot. طيب. You cannot perform while, pr prayer while standing, then you may sit, sit down. Ease. فَإِن لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ فَعَلَى جنب. And if you cannot even while sitting down, then you may lay on your side and pray. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَإِذَا ضَرَبْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ أَن تَقْصُرُوا مِنَ الصَّلَةِ And when you travel in the land, there is no sin on you if you shorten the prayer. Remember we talked about in the first majlis. When you're journeying, this is a illa, it's a reasoning to shorten the prayer. Why? Because praying full prayers while journeying may be a burden on you. Allah Azza wa Jal wants to lighten the burden on you so you may shorten, you may combine, you may choose not to fast during the month of Ramadan while journeying. Ease from Allah Azza wa Jal. This ease from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala gets, you see this in five different ways. There's the five different ways of ease from Allah Azza wa Jal on top of the ease across the Sharia. Ah. The first one, then what, like we, what we just described. What is mandatory upon others may not be mandatory if you're not able to. If you cannot perform hajj, then wujub al-hajj, the duty of hajj, is removed from you. A, a, a woman who cannot find a mahram to accompany her to go perform al-hajj, she doesn't have, for, for as long as she cannot find a mahram, she doesn't have to go and perform al-hajj. So that wujub al-hajj, duty of hajj, is removed from her until she can find a mahram. Ease from Allah Azza wa Jal. The women during their menses, they don't pray, they don't have to fast. Others have to. So the duty is removed from them. This is from the takhfif by removing the action altogether. They don't have to perform it altogether. Another one by 
reducing the duty on the, mus on the believers, on the Muslim, from al ibadah Like we just described, while journeying, you pray the dhuhr, two prayers instead of four. Al-Asr, likewise, etc., etc. A third way is when you actually can bring it forward or delay the action of ibadah, which is takhfif, is from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. For example, you're sick, you're journeying during the month of Ramadan, then you may f uh, break your fast and then you make them up later. So you're delaying the ibadah. فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرْ Make them, uh, you know, uh, the same number should be made up out of the other days. That's an ease. Imagine, imagine for a second that Allah Azza wa Jal makes it a duty upon you to continue fasting even while sick. How many people would be able to take that? You're sick? Fasting delays recovery, it negatively impact recovery, you break your fast. Takhfif min Allah. Now. Another is where the mukallaf, the believer, is giving several options. Several options, you could do this. If not, then you could do something else. You see this, for example, when uh, the kafara. You know, to make up for some of the uh, mistakes or some of the sins, right? If somebody, God forbid, kills another person by mistake, what is the kafara for killing by mistake? You have to free a slave. If you cannot, then you go to the uh, fasting 60 days. So now you have multiple options. If you cannot find a slave to free or you cannot afford, then you go to the next one, the next option, which is to fast 60 consecutive days. In another one, now this is this or this, next, so there is an order. In other cases, you can actually choose either this or this or this. There is no, no difference. You can choose whichever works better for, or easier for you. Like for example, you know, this is the kafara for al yameen You make an oath by Allah Azza wa I'm not going to talk to that person. By Allah, I won't talk to that person. Then you talk to him. So you broke your... You voided your oath by Allah Azza wa Jal. There's a kafara for that, right? What is the kafara? You can choose. You could either feed 10, 10 poor people, or you can provide clothing for them, right? Or you can uh, free a, a slave. You pick and choose. And if you cannot any one of them, then you fast three days. Ease from Allah Azza wa Jal. If you are in Hajj, Right? Allah Azza wa Jal tells us, don't shave until you give the sacrifice. Right? حَتَّى يَبْلُغَ الْهَدْيُ مَحِلَّهِ الْهَدْيُ The sacrifice of the one who is performing hajj. Right? But if there is a problem, or if you, are, if you have sickness in your head, then there are other options. Right? Then فَفِدْيَةٌ Then you give a fidya, either from uh, either observing psalm, uh, or uh, giving sadaqah, or offering sacrifice. Ease from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So this is actually from the misunderstanding of a lot of people. Like I said, they see it as a restriction when one of the objectives of the Sharia is ease and lightening the burden. From the maqasid of the Sharia, from the objective of the Sharia is that people know the true value of things. Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to achieve this, that we have a tr the correct view and value of things. For example, the sun and the moon are two great signs of Allah Azza wa Jal. But they are creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. They, not, they are not to be worshipped in themselves. They are not to be worshipped. Nothing from the, sh from the worship, from the action of the worships, should be directed to them, nor do they deserve anything. Although they are great signs. Back in the days, they used to worship them. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ لَا تَسْجُدُوا لِلشَّمْسِ وَالْقَمَرُ وَلَا لِلْقَمَرُ وَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُنْ إِن كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ And from among his signs are the night and the day and the sun and the moon. These are great signs. Do not prostrate to the sun nor to the moon. Know their value, who, what they are. They are signs, kids. Please be patient with us. We're almost there. I want to keep. I want you to keep stay, to stay silent. Barakallah fikum. Know what their value of the sun and the and the moon. They are signs 
they are not to be worshipped. Do not prostrate for the sun and the, sun and the moon, but prostrate to Allah who created them. So we know the value and we know which is which. Another example, I'll, give, I'll make an example with you. I'll t can I take you as an example? Each and every one of you. Allah Azza wa Jal makes me and you go to the restroom to relieve ourselves, to urinate and defecate so that we know our true value. People, some people call others to worship them and to uh, glorify them. Well, they go to the restroom to relieve, you know, to relieve themselves so that you know your true value. You're a human being, you're a creation from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. When it comes down to it, you have to run to the restroom to, re to relieve yourself. You cannot take it. This is the value of you as a human being. So why do you see yourself better than others? And why do you call others to worship you? From the maqasid of the sharia ah is that Allah Azza wa Jal makes reminders in what he makes befall you. He makes things befall you so that they remind you and bring you back to Allah Azza wa Jal and remind you of the purpose of why you were created in the first place. So for example, Allah Azza wa Jal makes sickness and illness befall you so that it brings you back, it reminds you. Some people forget about Allah Azza wa Jal and they are so much heedless, right? And then the sickness falls down onto them to remind them, all of a sudden to wake them from their heedlessness, to bring them back to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and to remind them of the very purpose that they were created for. So that you call upon Allah Azza wa Jal and you humble yourself among, uh, uh, in front of Him Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. He makes certain people poor, he makes poverty befall them, so that he reminds them uh, to go back to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And verily, we will make them taste from the near torment yani in this world, Bef prior to the supreme torment in the hereafter. For what purpose? in order that they may repent and return to Allah Azza wa Jal. It's a reminder, it's an alarm to bring them back, to wake them, to bring them back to their senses, to, to, remind, to remind them of Allah Azza wa Jal. So a lot of people don't see these calamities, sickness, illness, uh, you know, lack of you know, wealth and etc. They don't see them as maybe beneficial to them, that they are reminders, that they deviate so much Allah Azza wa Jal wants to remind them and bring them back. Otherwise, they would continue that and there's no ending to it. This is from the objectives of the Sharia, ah, is that Allah Azza wa Jal prescribes and decrees reminders for you. Allah Azza wa Jal says, ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِ النَّاسِ لِيُذِيقَهُمْ بَعْضَ الَّذِي عَمِلُوا لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ A lot of people actually translate al-fasad as corruption. But that's not the right correct, uh, translation. Al-fasad... One of the meaning is corruption. But what is the meaning of al-fasad in this ayah is the calamities and the hardships that Allah Azza wa Jal make befall people. It appears, why? As a result of what people has do have done. Have so those calamities and hardships have appeared throughout the land and see because of what, uh, of what the hands of people have earned that Allah may make them taste a part of what they have done in order that they may return. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ يعني إِلَى اللَّهِ To go back to Allah Azza wa Jal and return to Allah Azza wa Jal begging for His pardon. One of the objectives, now notice we're giving a lot of objectives now, specific objectives to, so that you can ponder on them. One of, one of the objectives of the Sharia ah is that they unite and help one another and give hand to one another so that they can overcome the difficulties that they face either individually or as a group. So ta'awun among people, the helping one another is one of the objectives of the Sharia. Ah. Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to help one another and to give hand to one another, to help one another to overcome these difficulties and hardships. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَتَعَاوَنُ عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَىٰ وَلَا تَعَاوَنُ عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ So ta'awun عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَىٰ is one of the objectives of the Sharia. Ah. Help one another in bir and taqwa, but do not help one another in sin and transgressions. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا 
ولا تفرقوا واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ كنتم أعداء فألف بين قلوبكم فأصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا and hold fast all, all of you together to the rope of Allah and not be divided among yourselves and remember Allah's favor on you for you were enemies one to another but he joined your hearts together he united your hearts and so that by his grade you became brothers Allahu Akbar that's one of the objectives of the Sharia almost there brothers from the perspective from the objectives of the Sharia is to address people with what they understand to talk to them in a way that they understand so that the sharia encourages people to convey and make da'wah to others talk to them learn the languages of people i am from i'm an arabic speaker originally akhuna abu yasir he speaks somali swahili so he is encouraged to learn English and I am encouraged I live in the America I am encouraged to learn English to preach and make da'wah to Allah Azza wa Jal other people from Chechnya maybe from Europe whatever it is Allah Azza wa Jal is encouraging us to learn the language of the people so that we give da'wah to them so that we can speak to them with the tongue that they understand this is also from the perspective of the Sharia. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ And we have, sent, we have not sent a messenger except with the language of his people. For what purpose? So in order he may make it clear, yani the message, to make the message clear for them. To convey the message of Allah Azza wa Jal and make it clear to them. And this is... Why is this objective? Why is the, was this made objective of, of the Sharia? Think about it for a second here. Ponder this. So that Allah Azza wa Jal makes your deed not only limited to you personally, but so that you actually do things that you will earn the rewards for them that have to do with others. When you make da'wah to others, when you use your language, when you use your studies, when you use what you've, what you've spent time on to acquire, when you use it to convey to others, if they accept it, or even if they don't, then you've done the, what Allah Azza wa Jal asked you to do. And if they do, then if they convert to Islam, then whatever they do from the goodness, you earn part, part of the, the, the reward as well. So now your rewards that are being accumulated for you, not only restricted to the, your own deeds that have to do with yourself only, but rather with the deeds that have to do with others else as well. Whatever goods they do, you also accumulate the reward. Invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and fair, uh, and fair preaching and argue with them in a way that is better. Alhamdulillah. So can you now, do you now appreciate this objective of the Sharia? Ah? Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to earn more reward. If you've limited your deeds to yourself, you would earn potentially this much reward. But if you now preach to others, if you work on others, and your deeds are, aren't limited to only yourself personally, but rather are also extended to others, Whatever good they do, do, they do, now you also um, uh, earn the rewards. So once Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to accumulate more rewards. From the maqasid of the Sharia ah, is that people turn to that which is beneficial to them in this dunya and in the hereafter and to turn away from that which is not beneficial for them in this dunya and in the hereafter. Something that, has no, that you have no benefit in, that should not concern you turn away from it and don't don't waste time on it but rather busy yourself with what is beneficial for you in this life and the year after which is a hadith in sahih uh, or i'm sorry in sunan al-imam al uh, al al-tirmidhi and this is a hadith that we commented on at another masjid not too long ago which he, in, in which Rasulullah Sallallahu says, part of the perfection of one's Iman, or one, one's Islam, yani one's religion, part of what help you to perfect, and we are all to perfect our deen, our, our Islam. Part of what helps you to perfect one's Islam is his leaving that which does not concern him. Invest your time in that which concerns you, in what, benefit, what has a benefit for you in this dunya and in the hereafter. 
which leads us to a concept that is closely related to this, which is a zuhd. A lot of people talk about a zuhd. Have you heard of it? A lot of people misunderstand the zuhd. They think that the zuhd is to actually separate from this life altogether, to live poorly, even if you have money, to actually uh, live poorly and show that you are poor and to not have money. They say if you have a lot of money, then there is no way you can be zahid in this dunya. And that's a wrong, uh, that's a wrong thing. It is a misunderstanding. You can be a very wealthy person and you can still be zahid in this dunya. For a zuhd is to actually leave that which is not beneficial to you in the hereafter. That's a zuhd. Zuhd. Always, whenever you come to something, you want to do something or you want to talk something or you, ha you hear something, you always think, is this beneficial for me in the hereafter? Does it help my hereafter? If yes, then you do it. And if it's not, then you refrain from it. This is a zuhd. So zuhd is not to leave money and not to have money in this life or not to be wealthy in this dunya. As a matter of fact, if this money helps your hereafter, then this money is good for you. This is, it's, uh, leaving it is not zuhd. Allah Azza wa says, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ The day wherein neither wealth nor sons will avail on the hereafter. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except him who brings to Allah a clean heart. Which means those who come to Allah with a clean heart, their wealth and their uh, sons will be of good, of good use to them, will be uh, beneficial to them. In another ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ بِالَّتِي تُقَرِّبُكُمْ عِنْدَنَا زُلْفَا إِلَّا مَنْ آمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا And it is not your wealth nor your children that brings you nearer to us, but only who believes and does righteous good deeds. يعني your money and your children does not bring, uh, bring you closer. But if you believe and do righteousness, then they bring you closer to your Lord. So money is of benefit to you if it is in the right context. And this is a zuhd. Does it help me? The question always should be, does, it help, does this help me in the hereafter? If it does, then the, by all means do it. And you are still zahid in this dunya. Allah Azza wa Jal says, uh, فَأُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ جَزَاءُ الضِّعْفِ بِمَا عَمِلُوا وَهُمْ فِي الْغُرُفَاتِ آمِنُونَ What they did, they will reside in high dwellings in paradise, and in peace and security. So this means, uh, by all means, if your money and children help you, then by all means, do them, and they will get great reward from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. From the objectives of the Sharia, and I will probably need another 10 minutes. I do apologize, we're going be, uh, beyond the schedule. Uh, so I, I, I will probably be 15 minutes over. Hopefully it's not much. We said 7.30, 7.45, inshallah. Please be patient with me. Another 10 minutes. And inshallah will be, will be over. From the objectives of the Sharia ah is that it makes its rulings clear and there's nothing hidden in it. All of the Sharia ah is wide, clear, and open. We don't hide it. There is nothing that you have to reach a certain level to be able to look into it. We don't, there's nothing that we hide from the Sharia. Ah. Everything is clear and open. We don't hide anything. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal says to His Prophet, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ Say, this is my way, which means that it is, anybody can look at it. Nothing hidden in the Sharia. Ah. We don't hide anything from other people. It is all its ruling are crystal clear. Everybody can take a look at it. From the maqasid, from the objectives of the Sharia, ah, is to submit and surrender to the rules of the Sharia. Ah. Those who truly understand the objectives of the Sharia ah are the ones who submit fully. They have no, no problem with the ahkam and the rulings of the Sharia. Ah. They submit to the text, be it an ayah of the Quran or a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they submit, they, they surrender in obedience to them. And they do not put their desires in front and above those texts. قَالَ رَبُّ الْعِزَّةِ وَالْجَلَالِ وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ فِي أَمْرِهِمْ It is not for the believer, man or woman, when Allah and His Messenger have decreed a matter, 
that they should have any option in their decision. They don't find anything. They surrender. They, so, they say, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We've heard and we submit in obedience. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُوذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ And whatsoever the Messenger gives you, take it and whatsoever he forbids, abstain. يعني surrender and submit. Uh, another ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُقَدِّمُوا بَيْنَ يَدَيِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Oh, who you believe, do not put yourself forward before Allah and His Messenger and fear Allah. يعني submit and surrender. Otherwise, then there is a chance that your deeds will be will be forfeited. And تَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالُكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ Lest your deeds may be rendered fruitless while you perceive not. يعني if you do not fully surrender and submit to the will of Allah Azza wa Jal, then, and you follow your desires, then your deeds may be forfeited and you may render fruitless your, your deeds. From the maqasid of the sharia ah is that the person does not follow his desires, but rather what Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْهَوَىٰ فَيُضِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And follow not your desire for it will mislead you from the path of Allah. So from the objectives of the Sharia ah is that you do not follow your own desires, but you follow the guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's what Allah Azza wa Jal wants from us. Guidance, to follow the guidance and not follow our own desires. This brings us to a conclusion. I beat myself by five minutes. Allahu Akbar. Yeah! I said 7.45 or 7.39. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make, I hope that it was beneficial to you. Uh, this, if you miss some of the majalis, they've been rec recorded online. The channel of this masjid has the recordings, inshallah. And there's also our channel, Da'wat uh, Al-Quran with Sunnah, also have the recording. By all means, go back and listen to them. Even if you've, been, if you've attended these three majalis, you may find it beneficial to go back and listen to them again to kind of concentrate more and focus the information. Uh, I hope that you found this topic, the maqasid of the sharia, ah, beneficial for you. And I hope that now you come to realize how understanding the objectives of the sharia ah, and that this sharia ah has objectives, the fact that it has objectives. And some of the objectives that Allah Azza wa intended and wanted from the Sharia ah, now has opened your eyes and made you look at a, high, a much higher level at the Sharia ah, where you come to appreciate the Sharia ah, and now you feel more active to come forward to practice it. Now that you know that these are not pointless ahkam but rather that they have objectives behind them you come to appreciate more and be grateful of the favor of Allah Azza wa Jal that he bestowed upon us this Sharia ah. have you understood everything you think you understood everything do you think you understood everything that's a lot right we talked about a lot a lot of objectives. And believe me, this is only a summary. We're just barely touching on the topic. I couldn't catch everything. Maybe this is this, this but, lecture. That's why we recorded them online. I so know, you go. But you know, maybe this lecture is for two days. To understand better, to, I, I think, you know. You're right. Sure. We, well, that's why we've split them in three majalis. I wish we could actually. Oh, yeah, inshallah, we'll consider that next time, inshallah ta'ala. Yeah. Can I test you real quick in two minutes? Because I still have my time. You know, I actually beat my, my uh, what I said. So I have a few minutes. I want to test you. Let's see, inshallah ta'ala. I want to test you with something new. Let's see if we were able to grasp. I'm going to ask you here. Is it, do you think, do you think, it, says it is an objective of the sharia that people leave their own personal benefits. Is that from the objectives of the sharia? Did Allah Azza wa Jal intend from the Sharia ah that we leave our personal benefits and not be careful about them, not pay attention to our own benefits? Do you think that is from the objectives of the Sharia? Ah? No. Who say yes? Any hand for yes? MashaAllah, I think you understood this well. This means that you did understand well. Some people think they're, they're getting so emotional with this. You say, yo, absolutely, you have to give up your own personal, uh, you know, you, you have to get out of your own personal benefits. That's not from the, from the objectives of the Sharia. On the contrary, the object, objectives of the Sharia is to actually 
take care and look after your own personal benefits, especially if they help your, ear, your hereafter. Especially as they help your hereafter and they help your akhirah. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَتِلْكَ الْجَنَّةُ الَّتِي أُورِثْتُمُوهَا بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ And this is paradise which you have made to inherit because of your deeds which you used to do in this life. So taking care of your personal benefits in preparation for the hereafter that helps your hereafter and the cause of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is absolutely something that will bring you closer to Allah Azza wa Jal is one of the end is one of the objectives of the Sharia of Islam هذا والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد I hope that you enjoyed and you benefited from those uh, lectures inshallah like I said I do apologize if they were a little too long but obviously with the t concise time that we have uh, this is what we were able to do but by all means you can go back and watch these majalis afterward inshallah barakallahu feekum wa jazakum allahu khayran wa wafakakum allahu li khayray dunya wal akhirah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you among those who comprehend, understand, and observe those objectives. And may Allah make you among the happy ones of this dunya and in the hereafter. Wafaqani Allahu wa iyaakum li kulli khair. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa iyaakum. Barakallahu feekum. Up to dinner. <laughs>